you know, at one time I had zero awareness about the importance of vitamins and what they did on our bodies, especially vitamin D. I maybe heard about it, maybe you get it from the sun, from the foods. I just had zero data on vitamin D and it just wasn't even on my radar. But over time, when I gained more knowledge about vitamin D, it is the most important vitamin out of all the vitamins because if you're deficient, boy, your immune system doesn't work, you're gonna have inflammation, you can have all sorts of issues with sleep and digestion, and the list goes on and on and on. But they may know some of the common reasons why the majority of the population is deficient in vitamin D. Gut inflammation, no gallbladder. As we age, our skin becomes thicker. We can't absorb vitamin D from the sun. The darker the skin is, the less vitamin D absorption because of the melanin, the pigment in the skin. The more obese someone is, the more diabetic they are, the more insulin resistance they have, the less vitamin D they're going to absorb. And also um, where they live. Uh, if they live at a high latitude in the north, they're not going to get much D. And it's virtually impossible to get vitamin D from your diet. People are also more aware that their genetics have a big play in vitamin D too. There are many different genes that a person can have a problem with that either um, makes it difficult to convert uh, into the active form of vitamin D or just absorb vitamin D. And I have that problem myself. Then you have if a person has an infection, uh, microbes can downgrade vitamin D receptors and block the absorption of vitamin D as their strategy to overcome your immune system. If someone has a fatty liver or they smoke or they consume sugar or they go through stress, they're going to absorb less vitamin D. If they're on a statin or on a low-fat diet, they're not going to get as much vitamin D. If there's pollution in the air or even if they're getting too many omega-6 fatty acids with the soy oil, the corn oil, the canola oil, that will block vitamin D. But I want to talk about seven things that you probably have never heard of before, and they're very interesting, and they're very important to know. Number one, the majority of side effects that may occur when you take vitamin D, okay, and I'm going to list them, fatigue, insomnia, constipation, diarrhea, a skin rash, nausea, headache, pain, all could occur if you're low in magnesium. Magnesium is such an important mineral in relationship to vitamin D. It helps it work better. And if you're deficient in magnesium, which a lot of people are, vitamin D may give you additional issues. So in other words, if you take more vitamin D, it can exaggerate an already deficient situation with magnesium. Now, of course, the side effect from very large amounts of vitamin D over many, many months, potentially creating hypercalcemia, could give you kidney stones. But this is very, very rare. And this, I think, is the probably the biggest fear. They don't realize that you'd have to take a lot more over a long period of time before you got kidney stones or hypercalcemia. And if you're taking magnesium and other factors related to uh, this vitamin D, like K2, the odds of you getting hypercalcemia, too much calcium in the blood, even go even lower. But drinking a little bit more water, like 2.5 liters of fluid per day, can really almost eliminate the formation of kidney stones because kidney stones form when there's a super concentrated amount of this calcium in the urine. So if your urine is so diluted, uh, it can never be super concentrated. Number two, taking uh, vitamin D infrequently works a little bit better than on a regular basis. So if we compare taking 10,000 IUs of vitamin D every day as a maintenance dose, and you instead did 50,000 IUs once a week or twice a week, that might work a little better for you. And this is good because sometimes people forget to take vitamin D and they think, uh, is it gonna do any good if I take it a few times a week? And the answer is yes. Remember, vitamin D is a fat-soluble vitamin. So when it goes in the body, it gets stored in the fat cells, and it's, it can be released over time. It's not like a water-soluble vitamin, like some of the B vitamins and vitamin C, that you would want to take those on a daily basis. The next uh, thing that people don't realize is this. When you consume like farm-raised fish, which, I mean, it's so, so common in restaurants, and uh, you just need to start reading the labels. Farm-raised fish has four times less vitamin D as wild-caught fish. Grain-fed animals compared to grass-fed animals have much less vitamin D. And chickens and pigs 
that roam outside and that are able to get out of the barn and they're exposed to the sun have much more vitamin D than these uh, pigs and chickens that are confined to a, a structure. In fact, when a pig or a chicken doesn't get to see the daylight, uh, they're like three times less vitamin D. All right, number four, and this is really, really interesting. Out of all the factors that can improve your health, okay, vitamin D is behind eating a healthy diet and exercise. All right, number five, vitamin D2, which is mainly you have to get a prescription for, is very different than vitamin D3. In fact, vitamin D2 actually in some studies have worsened MS, okay, versus vitamin D3 has greatly improved MS. Lupus, another autoimmune disease, uh, is not affected by D2, but it is with D3. The studies in vitamin D2 do not decrease mortality, but the studies with vitamin D3 do. And taking vitamin D2 can actually inhibit the absorption of vitamin D3. All right, next point, okay? Um, some people, when they go out and get exposure to the sun, uh, they think that they're getting a lot of vitamin D when they're getting exposed to the sun for like 10 minutes. So let's say best case scenario, you're young, you don't have any of these other barriers of absorption of vitamin D, and um, you're exposing a lot of your skin to the sun for about 10 minutes. You're only going to get 400 IUs of vitamin D. That is very, very low amounts. So just realize that it takes a bit more exposure to sun to get enough vitamin D. All right, and last point that I think is very, very important because a lot of people take vitamin D3 and they don't realize that manufacturing companies are adding um, corn syrup to vitamin D. In fact, the manufacturing company that I work with in Europe basically told me with a high level of certainty, I was the only one to ask or request a vitamin D product without corn syrup. And I would suspect a similar thing is happening in the US, but I don't know for sure. So when you get a vitamin D product, make sure they don't add the corn syrup or the maltodextrin. Now that you know those seven factors, I want to take your awareness even higher. If you haven't seen this video on vitamin D, you should check it out. I put it up right here.